Glory to Jesus Christ. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, brothers. Hello, sisters in Christ. I hope that you all are well in the Lord. It's so good to see you guys. And as always, I'm honored to be in your presence. I'm honored to be your sister in Christ. And I thank you all for coming to hear what thus saith the Lord. So people of God, I I have another warning, another warning from God. And I said to God, I said, another warning? <laughs> Can you slow down on us a little bit? But he said, no, because we are in a pressing time. We are in need of hearing everything that God has to say, people of God, so that we are prepared for his return. We don't know when he's coming back, but we know that one day Jesus will come to get his church. OK, the Lord spoke to me again over the past couple days this is something that I wrote down a few weeks back and then God brought it back to me again when I began to write this warning down. And people of God, the Lord, his heart is so heavy. His heart is so heavy. There's a mourning in the heart of God. And I heard the Holy Spirit say that the spirit of death is upon many people in this season. And the Lord's heart is so lowly because he is concerned about the eternal state of the people. And so this is so heavy on God's heart that it's heavy on mine, you know, to a point to where I can hardly get this word out. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. And this is not even something that I wanted to say, but I choose to be obedient to the Lord because I know that my soul as well as your soul and anybody else's soul is so precious and so important that we need to be obedient in receiving the word of God whenever we have the opportunity to do that, if that makes sense, okay? So before I get into the word for today, people of God, I want you to pray with me. I want you to bow your heads and let's pray before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come to you today humbly and hungry for the word of God. Father, we ask that you open up our hearts and minds to receive knowledge and wisdom from you. We ask, Lord God, that you dispatch the angels to surround us during our fellowship on today. Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we thank you for being our source in all that we are and all that we do. Father, we want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise right now. Father, not my will, but yours. I ask that you will only allow the Holy Spirit to flow through me as I read your warning to your people. Lord, we seek your wisdom and insight, and we want to have understanding of all circumstances that concern us, all things that concern our families. Fill us, Lord, with your knowledge so that we may walk on the straight and narrow path, God that you require of us. Lord, help us to be faithful in striving to know you, to have a relationship with you, and to follow all of your ways. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, amen. So guys, before we prayed, I told you all that the Lord had started to give me this warning over a period of a couple weeks, and he finally gave me the full warning just this past Sunday. And the first thing that I wrote down in the beginning of this warning was the worst phrase in the universe. I heard that in the spirit and then I wrote it down. I heard the worst phrase in the universe. And I remember asking God, what does that mean? And that's when he began to speak to me. And he said, they can only hear this phrase that I'm referring to once in a lifetime hallelujah and i said well lord what is this phrase that you're talking about and he says well beloved i want you to go to matthew chapter 7 verses 23 and i want you to read it and so i read it and this is what it says it says and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity people of god the lord says that this is a phrase that no one should ever be in position to hear for their soul's sake. Hallelujah. And why is this? Because it means that you will be separated from God. You will be separated from Jesus for eternity. 
Now, guys, I always mention in all warning videos, God did not give us a spirit of fear. Why? Because we are completely, if we are completely surrendered to God, right? We need not to worry about how we will be protected. We need not to worry about what's going on around us because we have the promise of God in Psalm 91. However, this warning is going to be for those of you that need a reminder. You need an eye opener. You need a nudge, right? You need a call to the throne. You need a call to the altar. You need to get back to your prayer closet. Hallelujah. And you need to establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. So guys, this is another written warning and I'm going to read it to you. Remember to test the spirit because I cannot what? I cannot answer your questions. I cannot modify God's word. I will not change God's word to fit what you want to hear, right? So if you have questions about this word, because this is God's word, then the father requires for you. And the Bible says to show yourself approved, to take your petitions and your questions before the Lord and allow for him to speak to your spirit and let you know whether this word is for you. Okay. I have a video in the description box that will help Help you determine how and the best way to test this word whether it's from me or any other messenger of the Lord okay so this is definitely a strong warning from God this is what the Lord says it is not wise to try and wait until the last minute to find me it is not wise to rebel against me it is not wise to play church in my name when you have no relationship with me God says that some of you use his name for show and tell to try and convince people that you are my beloved, but you are really telling lies. Have you read my word, which says that I have warned all of you that many will say to me on the day of my return, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? But God says that these so-called signs and wonders in your casting out devils in my name come from a spirit of divination, which is of Satan and not of him. The Lord says, just because you say Jesus Christ name, it does not mean that you are saved. Just because you cast out devils, it does not mean that you are saved, nor have you been summoned by me. God says that some of you are doing these things before people because you want them to worship you and idolize you. You want people to trust you so much that they will never seek me, but they will seek you for counsel. Many of you have made yourselves an idol in the presence of not your people, but my people, the people that I have created. And also behind closed doors, you do not come to me in prayer. You do not worship me. You do not deny yourself. You do not study my word. You do not model me before your families, nor do you speak about me to other people. The Lord says that he needs to remind many of you that he is God and it is he that formed you in your mother's womb. Therefore, you must know that he can see the iniquity within certain hearts, as well as the hearts that truly love him. God says, I cannot be tricked or deceived. And I advise you to find me quickly before it is too late. God says that he is especially referring to those of you that choose to rebel against him, meaning the ones that are my leaders and stand in front of the people and lie and then go behind closed doors and partake in wickedness. The Lord says that my love and wrath are sweeping through the earth in ways you cannot comprehend, in ways that you do not expect. God says, my love is reserved for my beloved and I will shelter them. I will take care of them and I will give them the desires of their heart in the presence of their enemies. My people will be prosperous in all the days of their life because they choose me, the Lord your God. 
but there will be many of you that will witness unfavorable surprises and swift awakenings in your life if you do not repent. God says, I'm allowing certain things to manifest in the earth to, so that you will know that I am God. As you can all see, the weather is roaring. People are chaotic. The earth is sick and the world is suffering. God says, hear me. These things are only going to get worse as we press forward towards the end of time. Therefore, I encourage you to find me. It is wise for you to always be ready for my return so that you will not fall prey to the depths of hell. God says, and yes, hell is a real place. It is a place where you will be tortured and tormented for eternity. It is a place where you will dwell in fire as punishment for not choosing me. God says, truly, I say to you that a repentant heart, belief in him, baptism, as well as having a personal relationship with him is a requirement to be saved, Jesus, from what I, the Lord your God, will tell many at my return, depart from me. I never knew you. This is my warning, says the living God, people of God. You don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Nobody wants to hear, depart from me. I never knew you. That is the worst phrase in the universe. And none of us need to ever be in position to even hear that. This was a very strong warning, people of God, and we must take heed to those of us who have fallen short, to those of us who have fallen back, the good news with all of this, people of God, is that if you're watching this video right now, it means that you still have time to make it right with God. You still have time to ask him for forgiveness. You still have time to get back into the will of God and allow for him to take control over your life. And I hear Holy Spirit saying, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. It doesn't matter what you did years ago that you feel like is so, so, so bad. It doesn't even matter what you did today. God says that he will meet you where you are right now. He will clean you up. He will shape you. He will mold you and he will make you into his perfect image. And all you have to do is just come to him. Because God loves you truly. He loves you so much that he is even crying out to you through me right now and asking you to come to him. And he's even telling me, he's saying, beloved, I want you to pray with them. I want you to pray with them. So the question is, will you pray with me? Are you ready to surrender yourself to Christ? Are you ready to stop playing around with God? Are you ready to stop rebelling against him? Are you ready to be serious, right? About your relationship with Christ. Are you ready? And we don't have to be on here long. We can just say a really quick prayer to get the process started. And then after you get off of here with me, you take it to the word, you go to the altar and you begin to involve yourself with people who know God, people that can mentor you. And if you need to, you can send me a prayer request and I'll make sure that we pray for you to help you, encourage you, strengthen you with your walk with Christ. All right. So if you will bow your head and pray with me, we're going to say a quick prayer. We're going to invite God into our lives. We're going to let God have his way in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come to you to confess our sins. Father, we understand that we have broken your laws and we have sinned against you and we should be separated from you. Father, we want to say to you right now that we are truly sorry and that we want to turn away from our sin. We want to turn away from our past. We want to turn away from all of those things that are not of you. And we ask for you to forgive us and to help us avoid sinning again. Father, we believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and the fact that he died on the cross for our sins, 
and that he was resurrected from the dead and that he is now alive and he still hears our prayers. Father, we invite Jesus to come into our lives, to be the Lord of our life, to be our savior, to rule and reign in our hearts from this day. Hey, shady be here oh From this day forward, Father, please send your Holy Spirit to help us obey you. Send your Holy Spirit to surround your people right now. Help us to completely and totally surrender ourselves to you right now. Father, we understand that you are the Alpha and the Omega and Jesus Christ is Lord. And when the Lord comes back to get his church, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And Father, when you come to get the church, we want to be in position to live for eternity. And so, Father God, we just ask that you forgive us for our sins, accept us for who we are, and to shape and to mold us and to clean us up and to make us into your image as your warning said today. Father God, do your will in our lives for the rest of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. So you've started. Congratulations. Welcome back. Welcome to the family. Remember, we are here on purpose to glorify God in Jesus' holy name. If you have a prayer request, please send your prayer request to Shanika Byers, you 4 c at gmail.com. I would love to be a part of your journey and getting back into alignment with Christ. I love you. I thank you all for becoming members, for joining Shanika Byers United for Christ, for being subscribers. And if it's the Lord's will, I'll be back here sometime soon to serve you. Bye.